Josh Hamilton, former American League MVP, one of the most prominent hitters of his time, and one of the best players in Rangers franchise history. There are a couple of videos about the five-time All-Star on YouTube made over the past few years, but I enjoy making things that you guys want to see, and Josh's story was requested more than anybody else's both in the comments of our last video, as well as a recent poll we did. Josh's story, like Tim's from the other day, is a story about a player that could have been inducted into Cooperstown a few years down the line if the dominoes had fallen the right way. In his case, however, his career wasn't a one crest, one trough kind of wave like Lincecum's was, but rather a roller coaster ride that featured some historic highs and terrible lows. Hamilton was drafted out of high school first overall in 1999 by the Devil Rays. He was a rightfully hyped up prospect as he hit over 500 with 13 homers and 20 stolen bases in just 25 games in his senior year of high school. The newly founded Rays had their first superstar prospect. By 2001, Josh was as impressive as advertised, finding lots of success in the lower level parts of the organization. Unfortunately, that was the first year Josh had to be admitted for rehabilitation after struggling with drug and alcohol use. Two years later in 2003, it became a more serious issue as Josh failed his drug test before the regular season began and decided to take the rest of the season off. He failed three drug tests the following year and was suspended for the entire season. It only got worse for Hamilton over the next few years, and while I'm not going to go into the details, I'll, ju I'll just inform you that he was suspended for the 2006 season as well. The pick that was supposed to be the leading face of the Rays franchise had had a really rough start to his professional career off the field, and it wasn't looking great for Josh Hamilton. So this is where I'm going to try to tell Josh's story a little differently. Let's fast forward a bit in Hamilton's career. Yankee Stadium, 2008. In what may possibly be the most memorable Josh Hamilton moment of all, he clobbers 28 homers in the first round of the Home Run Derby. That record held up until about a week ago when Vlad Jr. hit 29. Also, guess who won the Derby the year before Hamilton's? Vlad Sr. Funny how the universe ties things together. Anyways, Hamilton put on a show unlike any scene before it. You may have believed that he won the Derby, as he's the only name you ever hear when this Derby is mentioned, but in fact he did not. Justin Morneau of the Minnesota Twins did. Josh's performance was so incredible that he's the one that everyone remembers from the Derby, and not the actual winner. From that point forward, everybody knew who Josh Hamilton was, and they began dreaming of the player that he could become. So how did Hamilton go from rock bottom, two season suspensions, and a handful of failed drug tests to the top of the baseball world? Well, he had some help from some friends. It's rewind time. Let's go back to where we left off in 2006. A man named Michael Dean Chadwick of Crossover Ministries lent a helping hand to the future Ranger. He got Josh out of a very rough place and got him back on his feet for the next few years. Michael ended up becoming Josh's father-in-law a few years down the line as his influence changed his life in more ways than one. A former player by the name of Roy Silver also came to Josh's aid, as he allowed him to use his baseball facility in Florida if Josh agreed to work for him. At one point, Josh was sleeping on an air mattress at the facility, unbeknownst to the fact that he'd be playing in a World Series four years later. The very next year, after ending up back in the major leagues and a member of the Cincinnati Reds organization, Josh Hamilton had made his major league debut. He had finally made it and went from sleeping at his job to playing in a major league game in a little over a year. He had a fantastic rookie season, but had exceeded rookie limits and was shut out from the rookie of the year vote. Josh was traded to the Rangers at the end of the 2007 season and was ready to begin a new chapter in his career. So now we're almost back on track as we take a look at 2008. Hamilton began the season as the starting center fielder for the Rangers and became the first player in American League history to win Player of the Month the first two months of the season. He was rightfully voted into the All-Star Game, and we've already discussed what happened during the All-Star break. I don't think that ball's landed yet. We're going to pass through an injury-ridden All-Star season in 2009 and get to the peak of Josh Hamilton's career in 2010, the year he would win AL MVP and go to his first World Series. Hamilton had the spotlight in 2010. He won a batting title, had an OPS of over 1 which led the American League, and he and the Rangers were going to their first World Series. Not before Josh won ALCS MVP though. This is where our two player profile headliners meet. Tim Lincecum and the Giants took on Josh Hamilton and the Rangers in the Fall Classic that year, but as those of you who watched the last video know quite well, there was no stopping the Giants winning their first of three World Series titles over the next four seasons. Texas would, however, make it back to the World Series the following year, but couldn't close the door on David Freeze and the Cardinals with only one strike to go. Only one other thing I'd like to note from 2011, and I didn't really want to bring it up since it still breaks my heart, but I felt the video would be incomplete without including it, 
During a game in 2011, Josh was having a catch with a fan in the stands, and the fan tried to catch the ball that he threw over the railing and fell. Uh, the fall was fatal and is still one of the most heartbreaking things that I've ever seen in my time watching baseball. 2012 comes around, Josh began the season on fire once more, securing another Player of the Month award for April. In one of my personal favorite Josh Hamilton moments, he crushed four home runs in one game against Baltimore in the single most impressive offensive performance in a game that I've ever watched. 2012 would end up being Josh's final season with the Rangers, or so people thought. Josh signed with AL West rival Los Angeles in the offseason, and he was never the same player after that. After signing prominent free agents like Albert Pujols and CJ Wilson the year prior, the Angels were being aggressive yet again with the signing of one of baseball's biggest hitters. The bad thing for the Angels is, similarly to the others, the signing just didn't work out. Josh's offensive production was way down, and he just didn't have the relationship with the fans like he did in Texas. In 2015, Hamilton suffered a drug relapse, which immediately got the Angels looking to trade him. Sooner rather than later, the team found a good fit, and it was none other than the Texas Rangers. Josh made it back home in Texas, and the fans welcomed him with open arms. You could tell he was immediately more comfortable than playing in Los Angeles, which just felt right. Hamilton finished out the season with the team and made it to the postseason again, but unfortunately for them, ran into a Jose Bautista bat flip. Besides an injury the next year and a comeback attempt the year after, that was it for the career of Josh Hamilton. Josh was one of the great hitters of his time, but had the potential to be better for so much longer. Some of the choices he made in his career obviously weren't the greatest, and while I'm not an optimist, I'd like to look at the positives of Josh's career. He was a five-time All-Star, ALCS and AL MVP, and made it to back-to-back -back World Series with the Texas Rangers. His career could have ended back when he was sleeping at Roy Silver's facility every night, but it didn't. Josh made a name for himself and established himself as one of the greats. Josh Hamilton is a player that will be talked about for years to come, and I think down the line, more people will appreciate him more for what he did, rather than what he could have done. Let me know what you thought about today's video in the comments, as well as what you think about Josh Hamilton and his career. Like the video if you did enjoy, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you'd like to follow myself or SRS on social media, head down to the description to see how you can do so. I hope you all enjoyed today's video, thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys later. I call the shots, I run the balls, I'm Michael Jordan. Hit it with a little bit of push and a little bit of pull when a goddamn mic recording. I bring the heat, I rep the east, I like the cells. I don't even know what to do with the gold that I get, bitch. I'm Michael Phelps. I'm like LeBron, I get the gold. I'm Sherry Khan, yo, Kerry Bronze. I'm Randy Moss, I'm Mary Khan. My game on Royce, I'm Barry Bonds. I got a cancer, it's for the fans, like a lance on the tour.